Welcome back to the Super Not Funny Show Reviews. And today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Strange New World Season 2, Episode 1. It's entitled The Broken Circle, and that's uh, airing on Paramount+. Plus. So, what did I think about it, and should you be watching? Before we get into the review, get down there, hit like on this video. Yes, uh, many people have called Strange New Worlds the best of the new treks. Uh, I'm not going to argue with them, even though I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. But I will say I really love season one of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I uh, introduced uh, the proper crew of the Enterprise, who we only saw briefly in season two of Star Trek Discovery. Um, Anson Mount returns as Captain Pike. Uh, you have uh, Chris, uh, Chrissy, Christina Chong as Lon Noonien Singh. Ethan Peck comes back as Spock. We have Jess Bush as Nurse Chapel. Celia Gooding as uh, uh, Cadet Yota Uhura. And I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say his wrong name wrong. Babs Alas Sam. I uh, can't say his name. Olu San Malkum as Doctor Mbanga. Of course, Rebecca Romain as. Uh, Number one, and uh, it's you know it's it was so great to see this uh, this show come back. It was like coming back from a uh, you know summer break, come back to to school, seeing all your friends again. Just happy to see them, seeing what they've been up to since the last time you were uh, together. And uh, one of the things we saw is that uh, you know uh, Cadet Uhura is no longer Cadet now, uh, is commissioned as Ensign Uhura as a communications officer. So very glad to see that. But uh, if you were looking to see uh, Anson Mounts and his, you know, Johnny, Johnny Bravo style hair, you know, hair uh, quaff a lot in this episode, you are going to be disappointed because that's not what this episode about. In fact, Spock takes the con. Uh, he takes uh, control of the enterprise and we see possibly for the first time uh, the enterprise being, shall we say, uh, taken for a joyride, but all in the name of the greater good, uh, as usual. Uh, Ethan Peck as Spock is always great, and he uh, continues to impress in this one, but not the Spock that, you know, maybe people think of from the original series. In fact, this Spock has a lot more nuance because, as we saw in the previous season, Spock is, you know, kind of has to deal with the fact that as being half human, but also have been, been in a stressful situation at the end of last season, had to unlock and kind of undo his training in order to use his emotions to get out of a jam. And so that's sort of playing up in here where he's definitely having trouble maintaining that Vulcan, you know, le level headedness, uh, no non-emotional uh, stuff. And so, you know, in the course of, you know, they get a, a distress signal from, uh, you know, commander, uh, Noonien Singh line and you know she, last we saw her she was going to take the the girl that was taken by the Gorn back to her fan to find her family uh well she, apparently she finds them and there she's in trouble on a uh you know, she's running into trouble on this planet and they can't say no so against you know uh Admiral April's you know so now uh, his orders they they hijack it and we get to see Carol Kane's uh uh, I guess Commander Pelia, who we know is going to be become the the chief engineer on the ship, come into the the show and very just one just wonderful. I love quirky weirdo characters. Uh, the you know chief engineers seem to be that, and I'm so glad to have seen her. Uh, and when you know she comes in, uh, I think she called they call her Alanthian, and that's it's just a just an interesting addition, even though we don't see her uh, so much. Actually, this episode really is more about, um, you know, Nurse Chapel, Dr. Mbanga, and um, at Spock. And, of course, um, you know, Lon and uh, uh, Uhura, who are, you know, they're down on the surface, and they're sort of trying to stop uh, this consortium or this, you know, really as a cartel of... Um, humans and and uh, uh klingons who were getting rich off of the you know the klingon war but now that the war is over they're not getting rich so they want the war to come back on so they can get more rich um yeah i mean i you know a lot of people are just like oh, i don't need any politics in my star trek and i'm like well two 
too fucking bad because this show is not playing. Uh, it, it's wearing its politics on its sleeve, and it's pretty much like boo capitalism in, in this, or at least runaway capitalism. And so there's literally a plot to try to start the war up again on here, and it's kind of up to the Enterprise crew to cut that out. Um, and I won't go into too much spoilers about how they go about it, but, it, you know, it does involve a lot of pew-pew action stuff. Um, so I... I, I I don't know some parts that I didn't I didn't quite take to. I really felt like, and for a good reason, because I believe Akiva Goldman was one of the co-writers of this script. I felt like this was uh, Star Trek. Oh, this is their version of Star Trek Oh Nine. This is very action oriented, very action heavy, um, and you know, not it was it was cool. I mean, Doctor Mbanga and uh, Nurse Chapel they inject themselves with something and then they go ham on a bunch of Klingons. And, and there's an allusion to the fact that, you know, before we you know that the Enterprise was on a five year mission, but they were on the front lines as, as medical uh, officers in the, the Klingon War, which, you know, we know was was very destructive, even though we only saw it, you know, a bit from, you know, just from the viewers view screen of, of um, the discovery. So, you know, there's there's history there and we you know, they've seen some things. And they just kind of mow through a bunch of uh, Klingons in a very fun way. But also, it kind of puts Spock in a tight place because, you know, the and we know later on he's willing to sacrifice for the greater good. But is he really? Is he ready there? And this is a much younger Spock than we see later on in uh, The Wrath of Khan. Uh, so he's not quite there yet. Um, and it, it leads to an interesting but kind of predictable outcome uh, uh, of the episode. Uh, but Spock being, uh, as as uh, Pelias says, uh, un-Vulcan Vulcan, actually turns in their favor and actually turns what could be a disaster into kind of a big W, uh, a very big W. And it was, you know, this episode was quite fun. There was a bit with Spock, at, you know, wanting to go to warp and he doesn't have a, a catchphrase or anything like that, which is very Spock. Why would he sit and think about that? Uh even though every captain seems to have a, a, a catchphrase to like go to warp and Ortega's kind of give, given him <laughs> kind of pointers on it. It was fun stuff, especially when he finally picked his, you know, his go to warp uh, thing. It was a very Spock. I really, really liked it. Um, but overall, I mean, look, I think the storyline on here, what it wasn't super complicated or even like didn't peer too far into anyone's soul, except maybe Umbanga and, and chapel. Um, and and obviously Spock because he had to make a really uh, tough choice. Um, but all all that said, I had a good time with it. Uh, very very much happy to see this show back. Happy um, that it seems to be firing on all cylinders as I expected. And if this is the start and it just gets better from here, we're in for a great season. And um, I'm just I'm very very optimistic about this uh, second season. I'm uh, especially about Pelia as. Uh, the chief engineer there, there's a lot there seems to be a lot of fun to be had there but i'm also very much looking forward to seeing uh captain pike back and uh number one back so we shall see what uh what that will be going forward but anyway those are my thoughts on the first episode what did you guys think about uh this episode and what did you think about what i had to say uh get down to the comment section leave your thoughts there and of course you can always hit me up super not funny show at gmail.com or at super not funny s1 on twitter and while you're down there, do me a favor, hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. It helps with the algorithm so that more people see these videos and see these channel it helps us grow. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about episode two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds season two. Till then, I've been Mo, your commentary extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Thank you.